Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning. My name is Promise, and you're listening to a day of prayer's morning Bible study. We're so glad you could join us, but before we get into the word, let's open up in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for today. Just thank you for giving us the opportunity to be with you, Lord, and just blessing us and being our Lord, Lord, and just allowing us to worship you fully, Lord, and in the manner that you want us to do it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. (laughs) In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Good morning and welcome, everyone. We're glad to have you with us. As we dive into the study of the word in the book of Ephesians. So this morning we are going to get in chapter 1 and cover the first 14 verses. So if I could get a volunteer to read that section of scripture, please. I will. All right, Layla. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory." In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. Amen. There's a lot in there. So, as is our custom, we're going to open the floor and give each of you the opportunity to ask what ever well actually first and foremost let me back up to share what holy spirit is speaking and ministering to you and to ask any questions that you may have so who would like to begin i would all right layla so something that caught my interest in that was verse 14 and i looked in my margin because it's got a little one on it and a little two and what it said was that we were the Holy Spirit was the earnest down payment. And the image that the Lord brought to my mind or the correlation that he made is when we buy houses here in America, they most people require a down payment of a certain percentage before they allow you to take the home and you, you, you know, you pay off your loan if you take one because you didn't pay for it in cash. And the Holy Spirit is like that down payment for us. It's the market that goes, Ooh, I got it. Now we just need to finish walking this out on the earth. Um, and perf- perfection, if you will, perfecting us in our walk so that we are able to stand before him blameless and spotless at the great uh, white throne judgment. And we are able to partake in his goodness for eternity and be welcomed into his family as in bringing it into the kingdom. Like we are part of his family now, but the, the summation of it, the total, the finalization, that's what has to be walked out that's what we're waiting for and till that time we're supposed to be exhibiting his characteristics and his nature and we're supposed to be the living stones as we mentioned in our um overview of the book we are supposed the people that look at us should be able to tell that we're god's children they shouldn't raise it shouldn't raise eyebrows we're like oh we're children of god and they're like uh you don't look like it we should 
look like our father. We should act like our father and behave like our father. And I don't mean act as in a immature or unrighteous mocking of him, but we should look like many Jesuses because that's what we're supposed to be. They should see Christ through mm -hmm. us, not act as an acting, right? Fake or forced um, behavior. Pretending. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not that, but people should see Christ in and through us. That is the focus. So, amen. Amen. Anyone else? Well, Leah, as you were saying with the living stones, it's not just us going, well, Lord, you have to accept us as we are, but it's also growing with the Lord. And that's what talks about inside the living stones, because if you look at stones, they can't really grow. But with the Lord and allowing the Holy Spirit to move with us, and as you also said, it was a down payment. With the down payment, there's also money being added to it. So that's growing. And the Holy Spirit is... Help, um, Roma talks about how the Holy Spirit takes what's from the Father and discloses it unto us. So if we're listening to the Holy Spirit, we should be able to grow in Him. Inside the Lord, that is. Amen. What the Lord does always grows. And I believe that's... um. The book of John that yeah. talks about the Holy Spirit disclosing uh, what belongs to Jesus. And Jesus said, I said it that way because all that the Father has is mine. Mm -hmm. So um, as we're looking at this section that we just read, it's also important to understand that there are facts listed here. These are foundational truths that the believer can uh, rest his or her life on. And understand that this is indeed what happened when we came into Jesus Christ. Um, like the verse 14 that you mentioned, this is what Holy Spirit is doing to us. So not only is he guiding us into all truth and showing us things to come, comforting us, um, disclosing what belongs to the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ to us, um, teaching us what we need to know. He's also done something else to us spiritually, which has sealed us. And placed a guarantee on us so that he will get us from this natural life into eternity, into the spiritual life on the right side of it. I'll say that specifically um, to walk us through day by day everything that is needed until we put on that glorified body. And we are in eternity with Jesus being the light, him being our father and we being his, ch his children and nothing more is separating us. So as you read through this section, look at all the facts of what happened. Um, the fact that he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. These are mysteries being revealed. Mysteries of what Christ is, what the Godhead is doing through all of the action that he's taking. It's not Jesus didn't just come through the virgin birth because it was a nice idea. The father had a plan all along. That's why he's a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And because we're chosen in him, that the Lord is helping us become what we are supposed to be. And so just looking at this, there's fact upon fact upon fact, layer upon layer, so that we get a glimpse and understanding and revelation as to what God is doing here. Um, promise you had something, sweetheart? Yes, mommy. Okay. And mommy, as you're saying... Uh Facts. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Facts, Mommy. And how we shouldn't be looking at the Bible as just a good story. That's right. And the Lord reminded me of, as I was talking about before, that we were supposed to be living stones. Mm -hmm. And growing, the Lord reminded me of what happens to stones naturally. They break down over time. They get weathered. And so mm -hmm. if we're not growing inside the Lord, then we'll always be deteriorating. And Mommy, as you're saying that we need to be on the right side of it. Mm -hmm. And if we're always, to, and as Layla also said, it's a down payment and guarantee that we would be inside the heavenly community. If we're breaking that down, then we won't be guaranteed anymore. Mm hmm. So, a second Corinthians chapter four says this, and uh, verse sixteen says, therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. So there's the weathering of the natural body, but the spiritual man is supposed to be 
being renewed. It's, it's continually as we remain in fellowship and connected to the Lord, continually being renewed um, and made alive and invigorated, if you will, and growing day by day towards Jesus Christ. Now, it is an impossibility to lose your salvation. You're not just walking down the street and it falls out of your pocket like a coin, <laughs> right? Or a watch falling off your wrist and you go, oh, where did it go? That That's not how it works and no one can take it from you. But you can relinquish your connection with the Lord. You can say, never mind, I don't want to follow you anymore and go, go your own way, right? Yes. But also when we make that heart I do to the Lord, the Holy Spirit is there even in hard times, even in times where we would be quote unquote black backslidden or times that we are not walking with the Lord like we're supposed to, that he's prompting us and he's urging us and bringing us to restoration. He's continually working. And as I said, you can choose to turn away from the Lord and sever your, your tie with him. That's your right. God is not going to force you into heaven no more than he would force you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's not his, that's not the way he operates. He lets you have your free will and your choice. But for those who said, yes, Lord, and even though I'm flawed and I'm not perfect, I want you. He will make sure that you get to the end result. He'll make sure that you get there. So I can't come and take away your salvation. I can't say you're doomed, uh, damned to hell. I cannot do that to you. That's not my right. No one else has that right. Right? You try yes. Again? Yes. And it doesn't just fall out of your pocket. It stumbles away, it rolls away, and you didn't know what happened to it. it. The Lord is with you, and he will guarantee your redemption. He'll help you get to the, the end result. So you can trust him and walk with him. And even though we're flawed, he knows that all flesh is but a vapor and that it, it is... Um, inherently wicked, but with him, we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we have confidence in our walk. We have full assurance that he will redeem us uh, in the way of we are redeemed now, but also in our futures. Amen. By choosing to remain with him, Amen. abiding in him. Well, Charles, you had something to share, sir. Yes, dad. As you were saying, Mama, you're talking, and you, Leah, we're talking about how the Lord guarantees us, and he is a guarantee for us when we're mm -hmm. loving him and following him that we are guaranteed that we are going to meet him again in heaven. Mm -hmm. But something that we have to understand is that the Lord's doing this because it's what he wills, and he's doing it out of love. Um, it's, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but when you sign a, le a loan for someone else, someone can't get the loan by themselves, so they have to have... A co-signer. Uh, mm -hmm. Co-signer. So you just put yourself on the lease because they can't do it. That's not what's happening with Jesus. It's not reluctant because you don't have the goodness yourself. And he's hoping that you do eventually do it yourself. And he doesn't have any work to do. But he's mm -hmm. doing this because he loves us. There's no obligation or forcing Jesus and the Lord on his part. He's doing it purely because of his love. And that's something that Paul talks about in this the earlier scriptures because it's such a prevalent part of it because in our humanity we tend to think of okay what's the lord trying to demand from me he's trying to get all these service from me for free and i'm the one laboring and he's just sitting there but that's not what's happening he's giving us the opportunity to enter into rest that lasts all of eternity mm -hmm. well it's not just Amen. rest Amen. right uh, the earlier scripture you mean the very first one this is literally how the Apostle Paul, or the Lord, through Holy Spirit, has Paul begin this letter, this epistle. And he says what, exactly? <clears throat> Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Amen. To the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. So he begins by saying who he is, right? Introducing himself or reintroducing himself. Remember, he's sitting in prison at this time writing this letter or epistle to this group of people at Ephesus, right? Yes. But he also gives his role, his calling. And then he says where it came from. He's an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will, the will of God. 
So he's saying where it came from. Hey, I didn't just choose this from myself. This was part of the, the will, the plan, the purpose, the calling, the covenant of the Lord when he entered in it, or something we say here in this ministry often, the destiny track that the Father had purposed for Paul's life from the beginning, before the mm -hmm. foundations of the earth. Amen. And guess what? There is a calling, a plan, a purpose, a destiny track found in the covenant or the Lord's will for you and for your life. And he will reveal that to you. Amen. You know, that, I'm glad you brought that up, sweetheart. That's a, um, an important and a powerful observation, but I know the Holy Spirit um, Amen. told you that. But think about this, because what he's also saying is, he got here because God put him here. Amen. Not because he bought it from man. Not because another person, human being, approved him and said he could do it or granted it to him. Do you guys remember the, the sorcerer that wanted to purchase yes. the ability to, to grant the Holy Simon Spirit? Simon the sorcerer. Because yes. he wanted to have that power, that power. He wanted to have it. But sometimes especially now in the, the body of Christ, we're waiting for another human to go, I grant thee the permission to preach the gospel. I grant thee the permission to be X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to give you a certificate of paper that says, now you're equipped to do, you know, whatever God has called you to. And, and, and most of that, I'm, I'm the end part of it, they delete. It's no longer about what God has called the believer to do, but they're waiting for a human to grant them permission to, to be a pastor, to be who they are and to commission them and put exactly. them into place. But he's saying, wait a second, there's a different standard here. And if you read some of his other writings, he talks about, I didn't get this from man. I got this from the Holy spirit. I didn't even talk with the other apostles for a such amount of time. And when I did go, this is all I did. This is not coming from human flesh. Neither is it granted by human flesh. I'm here because of the will of God. So that's a distinction, again, to that maturity that God wants us to have. Because as many doctorin, doctorates and degrees or whatever else that I want to put on or anybody else wants to put on, I have no heaven to grant you entrance into. And neither can I give you a place in the body of Christ because it is not mine. Exactly. Now, because of what God has entrusted me with, it's important that I don't block you from doing what God has called you to do. But make no mistake about it. Jesus is the head of Jesus's body. I, I want to put that emphasis there because That's sometimes we think, uh, my head is sitting on these shoulders too. And, and it's Jesus and Kamisha and Bob and, <laughs> and Susie who were the head of the body of Christ and Susie and Bob and Kamisha. And, you know and, what I mean? And, and no, they're not. But just sometimes <laughs> it's easy to go, well, wait, the Lord put me in charge. So I have a say. And, and no, only the Lord has a say. Exactly. But for the people that God is saying, hey, I'm calling you. Hey, I'm prompting you. And you look up and you go, well, nobody told me. He's telling you. Your Messiah is telling you, the one who died for you, the one who you belong to, the one who has granted you, his Holy Spirit is telling you, he wants you to do whatever it is he's telling you to do. So because he called you, that's why you should go. Not because human grants permission, because it's not theirs to give. And nor do they have the power or authority to do so. Exactly. Last time I checked, the Lord said very plainly, I open doors that no man can shut. And he shuts doors that no one can open. Amen. Not people, Not the Lord people. himself. And it, what, what happened with the ark? The oh, Lord sealed the door. The Lord shut the door. He sealed it and no one could open it. You think they weren't trying? I assure you they were, but they could not open it. Absolutely. And I made a reference to when the Lord told the Pharisees that it's one thing if you don't want to enter in the kingdom, but now you're keeping others mm -hmm. from entering in. So I can't keep you out of heaven. I can pray all the prayers I want against your destiny. Anybody can pray all the prayers they want against your destiny. That. Not that I would do that. <laughs> but there's some not. people that have that mindset. I cannot stop you. No one can stop you from entering the kingdom of God but you. That's it. So it, even in what that, that reference to the Pharisees, it's my job to help you as much as the Lord puts it into my my, chat, um, my job description, if you will, mm -hmm. to help you get where God wants you to go. But you don't need anybody else's permission, no human's permission to do one single thing. Do what God tells you to do and then go the route he sends you and let him be the one who commissions you. That's it, because there's one God, right? And he said, 
His covenant, his will, was, I'll be your God and you'll be my people. Well, if God's our God, shouldn't we be listening to him? Yes. yes. Shouldn't we that. be sent by him? Yes. Not by another? Yes, you see this throughout the entirety of scripture. Mm-hmm. And they went because the Lord sent them. And they spoke because the Lord sent them. That was in our pattern example set forth in Christ Jesus, who said, Amen. I only say what the Father says. I only do what my Father does. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing of my own initiative, but only as the Father commands me, do I say or do I speak and do, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Okay. And that is the same pattern example set forth for us. Not about who wanted him to go where. Amen. He let it pass by before the Lord, before his Father, and Holy Spirit ministered to him. It's the same way or should be the same way with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's pause there for today. And can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, LaCharles. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you are the one who directs our steps, Lord, and that you are God, and that we, Lord, have someone who we can trust as we follow you, Lord, and that you only lead us into every good path, Lord, and that you never lead us to destruction. Lord, we also just thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, and what he did on the cross, Lord, and that you have made him the head of this body, Lord, and that we can follow him and do as he's telling us to do, Lord, because we know he's doing what is just and what is right, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, who draws us to you, Lord, and who leads us into all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. and Have a wonderful day. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.